So now we're having two Teach Me uh, sessions. So we've already heard today about uh, you know the value of Teach Meets and Twitter uh, as a way for educators to come together and to connect and to share and you know engage in a bit of solidarity. Um, our first Teach Meet presenter today uh, for this middle session is Nathan Beveridge, and he's got a very complicated thing here that I'm not going to read. So give it up for Nathan. Thank you. Thanks. At risk of um, hijacking the format, I thought I'd just give my two cents worth on the last few statements from the previous speakers. I'm wondering, like, as I'm watching all of this, and, and, I, and I love being back in the university, and, um, sorry, um, the, um, you're, you're all so on fire for these ideas, and it's really, really impressive. And, and I just, at risk of throwing a grenade into the university, I'm, I'm wondering whether university is part of both the problem and the solution. And because the universe, in terms of flexible schooling versus regular pathways and so on. And so what I'm wondering is, you know, we um, gearing everything systemically towards tertiary entrance is sort of what I'm wondering. And so when, the, when you take that out of the equation, that seems to be where all the exciting stuff happens. That's sort of just putting that out there. So what I'm wondering is, that, is as um, really progressive thinkers at universities, as lecturers and researchers and so on, like maybe um, the universities can sort of insist on that maybe we need to rework the tertiary entrance sort of pro and, and worryingly, where it looks like in Queensland, we're heading towards the centralised sort of approach and like all of your two, you know, year 11 and 12 learning culminating in these horrible exams where you're sitting, you know, in a hall with 150 other people spaced 1.5 metres apart from the next person and, and, you know, put in alphabetical order and so on. So that's just putting it out there I'll, um, and I'll leave that one for you to think about. So, so um, my... Um, my ideas as a technology teacher is that you know STEM stuff, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and all the other bits that work in there are a really awesome um, tool for student engagement. And so, um, how exciting! Um, I don't know what I was really expecting this conference to be, but um, just sitting here this morning, I'm just seeing such um, a bunch of troublemakers. You know, like. <laughs> And, and so if you're, watching, um, if you're watching later on the recording, I'd really um, recommend that you click over here on the related videos and, um, and watch some of these presentations. And I think your minds will be, will be blown. And um, yeah, as Glenda said before, you know, being on the second day, like, I mean, it's been said, like, it's just incredible. So, um, so as you've had um, uh, Dave, you know, who's sort of known as the pirate guy. Like, so I'll see if I can move over here. I've got a lapel mic. So Dave is the, um, the pirate guy. Well, some of you that have seen me speak before might have um, known me as Nathan, the guy with the bananas, you know, or um, Nathan, the guy with the robots, you know. So what's, so what's, um, what's that idea about? So a couple of years back, I did um, some presentations with this title. So bananas about STEM X applications of fruit and high technology in 21st century learning. I thought that was a pretty catchy title. And bananas became a bit of a, uh, a reoccurring thing because bananas, for some reason, are hilarious and engaging. And we had people like Stephen Conroy, you know, the, uh, who was at the time the communications minister and, you know, heads of... Uh, really big players in IT, like um, head of IBM and so on, they're enthralled with these bananas, that we could connect the bananas to a computer, and kids were, you know, enthusiastically showing them um, that sort of thing. So that's what the bananas sort of are all about. So sort of moving on from, um, from that a bit, and um, today I'm going to show you an example of where I saw STEM being applied to the regular curriculum and really taking engagement well beyond the due date. So... Um, you know, and if, if Dave is the pirate guy, well, maybe I'm like either the banana guy or the ninja guy. Or more recently, I've been thinking more about hacking education. So, you know, ninjas tend to have these awesome skills and move in the darkness, you know. And so, but the other people that are familiar with things I've spoken about previously will know that I like to think about the shadow side. So, and applications of system theory and uh, some really great stuff 
um, that I encountered here in the Leadership Masters program, uh, QT, and the work of Delahaye, uh, Halpin, Stacy, and the like, and this idea of the legitimate system and the shadow system. So I'm not sure if you've sort of seen this, but if you've done the Leadership Masters, you've probably seen this sort of stuff before. And it really resonated with me as a way of, of sort of framing what I was seeing in my own practice and as a way to explain to people like how to get buy-in on these sort of things, you know. And like Paul, um, uh, from St. Paul's earlier was talking about, you know, like getting leadership, you're sort of finding that balance with leadership, you know, and trust and so on. So as you'll see over here, you know, this is my obligatory and um, very complicated diagram being a university presentation. So you'll see I've put over there the legitimate system stuff, the features of the legitimate system stuff like um, people sitting exams and the curriculum and, you know, tertiary entrance and all that. And then all the other awesome stuff like bananas and robots and so on on the other side. And so uh, what the idea here is, is that all the awesome stuff and all the tinkering and experimentation happens over on the shadow side, and then you can show that as a proof of concept and sort of move it over into the legitimate side. So if you look up that uh, thing I mentioned earlier, the bananas about STEM and so on like that, you might find a presentation on YouTube that I did about that. So you can look back at that. So, I was, I've spent the last five and a bit years doing most of my work in the extracurricular field, which is where you get to play with all the cool stuff and then show people um, what's possible. So I've seen in your pack you've got a paper from Michael Dezawani, and we've done some work on Minecraft and stuff, which came out of me tinkering with this bunch of girls here. This is my band of misfits. It's a bit of a tech glee club, you know, everybody's pretty welcome. Um, and... Um, you know, and then that ends up, teachers see what's possible and bring it into the mainstream. So we've done all kinds of things, like robotics, this is a robotics team, uh, to creating an army of robots that did a robot dance um, on an on a open day, you know, and, we, and um, through to, that's a child playing hot cross buns on actual hot cross buns. <laughs> the, other, the other troublemaking that we're up to is flying quadcopters. So, I, um, I bought one of the quadcopters, like, and one of my students ended up getting one as a very generous uh, present from her grandparents. And so we'd bring him in and fly him in the hall, because in the hall it was the perfect place to fly him. It wasn't too windy, and we weren't going to hit anybody and so on. And um, so that became one of our favorite things to do there. And a really um, something that one student in particular really was really, really engaged with, you know, and so this is about engagement. So what, um, so what I was, you might have seen this a million times before, and so what I was noticing is that this student that was into quadcopters was being asked to do work that she just wasn't engaged with, you know, and, she, and so it was like this, so to find X where X is something you don't care about, you know, so... And, and she was really technically capable, and she had goals in mind of what she wanted to do at uni and so on, but she wasn't handing in drafts, and she wasn't playing the game properly in her classes, and in one class in particular, so her technical drawing, her graphics class. So I was talking to her teacher, and he was saying, oh, you know, I'm really worried about her. She's not, um, not handing stuff in properly. And I was thinking, that doesn't make sense. She can do the work. You know, she just doesn't care about it. Like, she's sitting there playing Minecraft instead of doing her work. So I said to her, look, what I think, we need to figure this out. And now, I wasn't her teacher for the subject, but I said, let's figure it out, and um, I'll be your customer for this project, and I'll give you an idea, and you can show me what you're producing in the subject. So what I'd asked her to do is come up with a hook mechanism for her quadcopter so we could lift things, so we could kind of invent a game where we could pick things up and carry them around with our flying machines and so on. So this is the first design she came up with. Ah, so the other thing was, that wasn't in the curriculum, was that I said to her, we'll actually 3D print your object and actually make it. So this is a 3D print of her design that she did for a graphics class. So we put it on the quadcopter and realized that 3D space and physical space are obviously different. So on the computer, it worked. It looked fine. She'd modeled, she'd done the assignment 100%. She made a 3D model of her quadcopter and she designed the product and it was correct, except that it didn't fit in the real world because um, 
you, you probably can't, you might be able to see here, this bit, it's in two pieces. So without taking the quadcopter apart, you couldn't actually fit it on. So we sort of had to break it a bit here to get it to go on. So that was transferring to the physical sort of thing that she could hold by 3D printing it and, and um, extending her learning. So this wasn't part of her assignment. So other kids in the class weren't necessarily doing this. Uh, OK, so we flew it anyway, you know, even though it was hacked together. So we flew it, flew it around anyway to see if it could actually fly, whether our idea was actually possible. So she went back and reiterated the design. So this is now after the due date. This is about a week after the actual assignment, which didn't relate to 3D printing, was done. So she redid the design, 3D printed it, and put it on again. And then can you see what's happened here? It's sort of bowed out a bit. It's not quite the right size. Again, being able to physically hold it, she went straight away, she said, oh, I see what I've done here. I haven't, I've added these parts on, but I haven't subtracted one centimetre from each end. She added the bits on and didn't subtract. Because in the 3D model, it looked fine to her. It didn't, it didn't matter. So when she physically held it, she straight away realised what she did. So of course we flew it anyway. So we wanted just to see what would work. And then we tried things as well, like um, seeing if we could carry something. And if any of you are familiar with St. Aidan's, this was at St. Aidan's, this is basically outside the principal's office as well. So, so of course, I'm like, yeah, let's just fly it outside um, Mrs. Spiller's office. And uh, yeah, if she sees us, that's great. She'll see what awesome stuff we're doing. So not that we were, I wasn't worried about getting in trouble. And that was that trust thing that Paul was talking about earlier. So. <laughs> And so then this photo actually came from her third iteration, which she emailed me on like a Friday night. So this is now about two or more weeks after the original assignment, which didn't involve 3D printing at all, um, was handed in and submitted. So that was all ticked off. So she was still working on it, still passionate about it. So she emailed me this um, saying, look, it works. She took it home, it fits perfectly. So this was the third iteration. And she also, I said to her, well, you know, I guess those of you think about things like the SAMAR model and so on, you know, if you're operating at those higher levels and sharing with the community and trying to engage with other, other people, well, um, this is sort of an example of that. There's this thing called Thingiverse, which is a place where you can upload 3D models. So she uploaded it to Thingiverse so that other people with AR drone quadcopters could find it and and make their own. People can download the file and 3D print it. So, and they did. So you'll see here that 106 people had viewed it, 19 people had downloaded it. So she emailed me this screen clipping. This, and when I look at the file dates, I can see this was about three weeks after the due date. So she's like, people are interested in my design. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, because it's awesome. So then a couple of weeks ago, I told her that I was going to be I, you know, that I was going to be presenting about her work because it, it really, um, to me, is like a really great example of something living on beyond the due date. And I said to her, could you send me the stats, the current stats? So this is exa almost exactly a year on. 932 people have seen it. 284 people potentially have her hook around the world, anywhere, that downloaded it. And that wasn't part of the assessment, but, if it, but it could have been. So this, and this went on for ages. So interestingly, those of you that are into Minecraft will see on the side, she was also crafting other things, Minecraft-related things, just because she um, was. And the stats of those, these 615 people have downloaded her little Minecraft wolf thing. And she was, um, it's just the same as the wolf in Minecraft, except, you know, 3D printed, so you can own your own one. So, um, and other bits and pieces. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so here we go. This is what I'm, how do you do this stuff? So a lot of you have um, sort of smiled with acknowledgement of seeing the TPAC model. So that's another thing that really resonates um, with me as a way of describing that awesome kind of knowledge. Um, maybe, ha hands up if you are familiar with TPAC, just so I can... You know, I'm obviously preaching. Okay so, okay, so there's enough of you that didn't put your hand up that I can sort of explain it very, very quickly. So this is a model that we use, that we can use, to explain that special kind of knowledge that 
helps you use things like bananas in education and seeing that bananas or maybe quadcopters are something that could be used in the curriculum. So you've got your pedagogical knowledge, you're already expert teachers, you know about the content of what you're teaching and then you, what you do is you go away and you tinker with technology and you kind of mash all that knowledge up and you end up with this sweet spot in the middle which is where you know how, as an expert teacher, how to apply technology to achieve um, great learning outcomes, blending together your content knowledge and so on. So there's a lot more to it, but if you haven't really looked at it, you really should go away and look at TPAC. So then where I see this all fitting together then is that TPAC as a way of developing teacher capacity. So this is where um, if you then operate on this side of this model, so in the shadow system, this is where you tinker and experiment with something yourself and so on, that then helps you develop your TPAC, which then should lead back into the legitimate system. So that's sort of what I'm proposing to you. And so what I'd really um, commend to you is tinker with things, play with things, um, live dangerously, sort of um, you're already a bunch of troublemakers. Um, <laughs> I really, uh, something I really uh, love at the moment is this place, Hackerspace Brisbane. If you're from here in Brisbane, like, come, um, talk to me on Twitter or something and, uh, and come out and visit Hackerspace Brisbane. It's mostly IT and, and other techie people, but I reckon it's a really exciting idea for teachers to learn a lot of techie um, stuff and tinker with things and learn kinds of things that you may not have access to at your schools or at your homes and so on. So thanks for joining me on the roller coaster. So.